Hello and welcome to the table. Today we're going to play what is arguably still the best solitaire Dungeons and Dragons game ever. So we're going to play Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, this game is still quite good. Now granted it's not going to be fantastic to, per today's board game standards. It is, this is the entire game right here. As you can see, uh, we have, uh, you know, it's an electronic uh, board game. Um, it still has a wonderful um, theme and uh, actually even play. Uh, I think a lot of people, you know, try to make a solitaire, you know, get rid of the GM uh, or DM, I guess the game master um, or dungeon master, whichever you prefer. Um, this one is the Dungeon Master. Uh, it is a very simple game, so I'm not going to, you know, elaborate on it too much. Uh, it does require a 9-volt battery. Uh, it is no longer on the market. Uh, I think this game came out in 1981. Um, yes, you heard me correctly. 1981. And uh, here is the little promo for it. It's a game of skill. Um game of strategy it is for one or two players and you can play um i can tell you it's it's a lot easier with one with two players because uh, one can um there's a dragon in this game and uh one player can toy with the dragon while the other one takes the treasure but obviously it's not a cooperative game so when you're playing a two-player game you are actually fighting with each other uh and things of that nature so let me um uh, introduce you to the game and then these are the components. And they actually, um, this is just a drawer that slides right underneath the uh, game itself. Although I'm having a hard time doing this with one hand. There we go. It just slides right into the game. So it's pretty slick. Uh, I am missing some pieces. Um, since it's from 1981, I think that I am going to be given a pass on, a free pass on that one. But I do have the important pieces, which are these four. Uh, one of the pieces I know I'm missing is this. So this is a this is for the treasure room. There should be one for the first player and one for the second player uh, that's similar. It's for their secret rooms. And then I'm pretty darn sure I'm missing some wall pieces too. Uh, my kids uh, are much older now, but back in the day they were not very kind to this um, to this game. Um, <clears throat> okay, so. There's not much to describe. There's a little on button in the back here, so let me turn it on. And so what you heard was the sound indicating that it's on. It's actually ready to play right now. Um, <clears throat> it is ready to play what is called a level one uh, game. There's also a level two. And so the way you uh, do this is if you press the buttons, um, it always does what's on the top of the line. And then if I hold this switch key down, just think of it as like a shift key, and then I press the button, it'll do what's below the line. So that's how I could sh shift it to level two, okay? Or I can get it back to level one, and now it's back to level one. Or I can go back to level two, back to level one. Okay, so um, what's the difference between level one and level two? Uh, level two has doors, and those doors sometimes shut. So you may think that a corridor is open and then the doors will shut behind you and they just slow you down and basically cause you to die. Um, so uh, this game is an audio game. So we're going to have to listen for sounds and that's how we're going to recognize things. These little pictures you see here are all just for show. They don't actually mean anything. Uh, so don't worry about the pictures on the board. The only thing that matters are the sounds that we hear. And, of course, the board represents a, uh, a labyrinth or a dungeon, and uh, it is uh, invisible to us. So what we would do, and the way you play, is you're going to pick a location that's going to be your secret room. And wherever you place it, you tell the game, and then the game's going to start from that point on. And the treasure room is going to be hidden. It's somewhere in here. And it's going to be guaranteed to be at least three spaces away from your starting spot. So some people have a strategy of starting up here in the corner. So that way the treasure room, you know, is 
you know, you're not worried about going one direction, but the treasure room's actually the other. There, there's all kinds of strategies. Obviously, if you start right in the middle, then three spaces away means treasure room's gonna be on the outer edge. You know, there's, I don't know, you, you, it's up to you. Um, but uh, we know that much for certain. There is a dragon, and that dragon is sleeping with one eye open. And so he's gonna be in the treasure room, and if you ever get within three spaces of the treasure room, he wakes up. And once he wakes up, he relentlessly pursues you until he attacks you. And then after he attacks you, he uh, then moves back to the treasure room. Uh, he doesn't move immediately. He will move one space at a time. We can only move orthogonally. The dragon can move diagonally. The dragon can fly over walls. We cannot. Um, Obviously, this is used to represent the treasure itself. Um, if you're carrying the treasure, you could get attacked by the dragon. And if you do, while you're carrying the treasure, you're immediately dead. Otherwise, if you're not carrying the treasure, you actually have three hit points or three lives, if you will. The number of movement points you can do is eight um, at the start. But if you ever run into a wall or a door, uh, your movement immediately ends. Okay, so... Where are the walls? Well, we don't know. That's part of the game is you have to figure it out. It's, it, you have to explore the labyrinth. And so you literally uh, map the game and say, oh, okay, there's a wall here. Uh, then we discover there's a wall there. And then you're going to see a labyrinth uh, start to form. So, um, uh, and like I said, it's a two-player game. So we have two miniatures here. And um, these are all made in a fashion so you can see there's like a beveled edge on the bottom that you can actually push down on a space. So so what I'm doing right now is I'm telling it where my secret room is and you can change your mind as often as you'd like, okay? Um, but uh, uh, wherever you pick last, once we hit next turn, then the game will actually start. So um, yes, the, the treasure is what we're trying to do is find the treasure and get back to our secret room. That's the objective. Um, so it's a very simple objective, and like I said, there's these little green pieces. This is for the treasure room once you find it. Um, sometimes you never know exactly where it is. Um, but uh, there's supposed to be two more of these, one for each player, player one and one for player two. So what I do when I play it now is I use this for my player, and then uh, if there ever was a player two, I don't know, we'd try to find a dime or something and put it in there. Or heck, I can even use, I haven't put away um, the pen dragon. Hell, we can grab one of these and it fits uh, quite well, actually. Um, probably maybe a tad too big, but yeah, we can, we can do something like that. And um, we, can, we can improvise. I have, I don't, I'm not saying this for bragging purposes. I probably have over 450 games here. So um, I, can, I think I can find components if I need it. Um, Okay, so uh, let's go over real quick the sounds, and then we'll play. And um, okay, so the game actually lets you test the sounds, and it's largely because the sounds tell you all the feedback uh, you need for the game. So the first thing uh, we want to hear is, you can see here it says dragon flying. So we're going to listen to what it sounds like when a dragon is flying after you. Okay, so that's the dragon flying after you. And then the next one is if you get defeated by the dragon. That means that they, the dragon found you. There is no winning against the dragon, by the way. If he finds you and he makes it to your location, you're dead. Or you're, you lose one of your life points. Uh, and I forgot to mention, when you lose a life point, you lose your, your, um, your movement speed gets cut. I think by two points, so you, you start with being able to move eight spaces, then it drops to six then it drops to four, and then you're out of the game. Um, and like I said, if you have the treasure, you're immediately out of the game if the dragon catches you. Um, so this is the defeat sound. So for a 1981 game, it's pretty good. And not only that, but even in today's standards, it still makes sense. That first one sounded like a dragon flying. The second one actually sounds sad. Um, okay, this is the dragon attacking you. This is how you know the dragon woke up. This is how you know you hit a wall. 
This is how you know you hit a door. This is an illegal move. This is a warrior moving. This is warrior one. This is warrior two. So, okay, you see the difference between warrior one and warrior two? And this is if you win the game. And then the treasure is gonna sound very similar. And that's all the sounds in the game. Okay, so like I said, we gotta figure out where our base is gonna be, okay? Don't over analysis paralysis this one, folks. Just pick one and go. So I'm gonna pick that spot right there. And I'm going to, oh, I guess I like the guy with the mace. So there's my guy. So I'm gonna push it one more time just to make sure. And then I'm gonna hit next turn, okay? Now it's saying, where is player two's secret base? So we're not gonna have a player two, so I'm gonna hit next turn again, and now it's a one player game, okay? So uh, let's go find this treasure. So first thing I wanna do is let's go, uh, I know for a fact that the treasure is not in this corner. So one of the strategies is uh, there's no time limit to this game, so let's map out the dungeon. Like, let's know as much information as we can before we wake up this dragon. So I'm gonna map out this corner, and that's my strategy, because we know that the treasure has to be at least three spaces away, so I pick a spot that's less than three spaces from a corner, and now I can map out an entire corner safely. See, I'm always strategizing, even when I was six years old. <laughs> All right, so let's go. Um, okay, that was a legal move. Now let me try an illegal one. See that? That's illegal. So let's try to go again. Okay, I just used two of my movement points. All right, I hit a wall. And did you hear how it, uh, it did the wall sound and then it did a player one sound? That meant that my turn ended uh, when I hit that wall. And now it's my turn again. Obviously, if it was a two player game, I would have had to wait for player two to take their turn. So I hit a wall. So um, obviously there's an implied wall on the outer edge. Um, so I'm going to go back and then up and in, up, there's another wall. So we're already seeing that there's a bit of a de dead end here. I'm willing to bet that this is all clear. Uh, I don't think there's ever any spaces on the board that are like impossible to find. So, um, I'm going to try to see, uh, the other direction. Oh, I hit another wall. All right, let's go, oh, that worked, that worked, that worked. So this is all open. And yes, you can have a wall right next to your starting position. Um, uh, they said that, you know, obviously you're guaranteed, I think, if I remember correctly, you're guaranteed to have at least one or two. Um, so it's possible I'm gonna have a wall here because I already know I have two entrances to my secret room. So let's try going up. That worked. So the idea here is I'm trying to get as much of the dungeon understood as possible. Because once you wake up this dragon, he's relentless. And you want to know where to go without running into a wall. Um, all right. Got another one there. So there we got a nice dead end. Well, it's not nice, but it's nice that we figured it out, right? And of course, this is the most awful part. This piece broke off, as you can see. So I don't have, actually it still stays on pretty well. Um, I just woke up the damn dragon. Okay, so I'm within three spaces of the dragon. I think it's safe to say the dragon's not in this corner. Um, so that means the dragon is down here somewhere. And obviously you want to get the treasure, but the dragon is literally sitting on the treasure right now. So you need him to chase you, but you have to go where he was, right? So dragon moves one space at a time, so you want him to chase you,
But at the same token, you got to get to where he was. So you sort of have to do this little uh, hide and go seek kind of thing. So obviously I want to go down here and unfortunately I don't have any of it mapped out. So that's the scary part right now. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe I want to go back this way and see if I can map this out. So let's go one, two, see and I hit a wall. All right, so that means the dragon just moved one space towards me. Um, I could put this here just as a reminder that that's generally where he started or I could put the treasure chest there uh, to say this is generally where he started. Uh, you know, and so if we're going by that, that means he's generally around here. I don't know exactly where he is. I'm just, you know, using uh, good, good guessing, right? So let's try. All right, this is not good. So by my, oh, he already got me. So I've already been attacked. So we know for a fact the dragon is exactly at that location. All right, so that means he flew two times, right? So that means this treasure is two spaces away from there. So it's one of these three spots, I'm guessing. Um, I'm willing to bet it's not this one because remember the first time he flew, we were over here. So I'm willing to bet the treasure was here and he flew this way to come towards us and then we walked right by him and then he flew that way and got us. So I wanna get this treasure. I know I have a pathway up here, uh, but let's see. All right, so I know he is flying like that. So I'm pretty sure he's there. So I run a large risk if I try to run by him when I don't know what the, what the map looks like. So what I can do, now if I go to my secret room, he can't see me anymore and he'll actually fly back towards the treasure. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna probably do, and then I'm gonna say next turn. So let's get him to go there. And then I'm gonna go, and then I'm gonna say next turn. And he will fly diagonally towards me there. And now I wanna run by him. So I'm gonna go four, five. Oh no, no. And so not only that, but look, the dragon is, if I'm doing it correctly, the dragon is in my way. <laughs> There's a solid wall all the way across. Okay, um, oh no, that was another wall. I'm pretty sure that's where he is. Oh no. This might have actually saved me because I think the dragon's there now. So let's do... All right, because remember, the dragon attacked me once, so my movement points dropped from eight to six because I lost some strength. So it would have been really nice to have those eight movement points right now, but uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm pretty sure he's there. Now this is going to possibly kill me. If I hit a wall, I'm screwed. So let's try going this way. Oh, we got lucky. Let's try to get to the treasure. Nope. So my guess is he's right there. So we got lucky again. Nope. Oh my goodness, this is getting... <laughs> this is getting quite hairy here. Um, I'm gonna hit a wall eventually, just like there. Oh crap. Yep, I was spot on. Right there he is. So I'm down to my last life. And I can only move four spaces at a time. All 
All right. My guess is he always flies diagonal to get in your area. So this is bad. I want to get there, but the dragon is cutting me off. And I only have four movement points now, so... Oh... All right, I got him to go up there. Oh no. All right, I'm going to go into my secret room and then hit next turn and watch. He didn't kill me. So what happened is, is he, he then flies back to the treasure. That's his AI. And I'm pretty sure he goes diagonal when he does that. Because he always goes to the row or column of his target. So now I'm going to go one, two, see, three, four. I was able to walk by him because he went diagonal. And so he probably went diagonal again like that. So if I hit a wall, the game's over. And the game's over. I lost. So that is a complete game of Dungeons & Dragons Solo, the Labyrinth game. And um, that was still fun. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's a little nerve-wracking because you don't know where all the walls are. And obviously there's a ton of luck. Um, and I know I, uh, I make fun of games that have a lot of luck in them, but I think this one has a nice mix of luck and strategy. And for 1981, this was freaking awesome. Uh, I also had another game that my stepmother threw in the trash. It was, it was flawless and it worked perfectly and it was called Dark Tower. And my stepmother uh, was not invited to my wedding. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, so anyways, uh, um, uh, I still don't forgive her for that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, she still owes me a copy and she won't go buy one. Um, but uh, Dark Tower and this consumed a large portion of my childhood. And it was probably what has gotten me into a lot of the games that I play today. Um, but I make a joke because people always try to make a solitaire D&D &D game. And to be quite honest, most of them aren't any better than this. Um, uh, there's a lot that try and they get really fiddly or really rules heavy. Uh, this is pretty awesome. And uh, we just played a complete game in 23 minutes. Hell, some board games we've done that takes, that's not even a, a turn. So uh, that's how you play. Um, I think it's actually ready to start another game. Uh, I'm not sure. Let me check. Nope, it's not ready to start another game. So uh, what you do is probably just turn it off and back on. And the labyrinth is different every time. So off. There we go. On. Now, if you had a two-player game, they can actually try to attack each other to steal the treasure from each other. There's all kinds of uh, shenanigans you can do. Um, so let's do like we did before. And I hope you're appreciating my desire for getting the labyrinth figured out. Because when that dragon's chasing you, you need to know where you can safely run and not run.
Holy cow, that's a big open area, area there. Definitely hit a dead end there. Uh-oh. <sighs> so, he can be anywhere, folks. I mean, we know it's not, it's generally not up here, but he's either in this corner or he could be even creeping over there. Oh, boy. All right. So what do I do? Do I run away Sir Robin or do I try to keep going? Let's keep going. That's the dragon. I step right in his location. All right, so here's the problem. That's where the dragon was. So obviously the treasure is within one space of that. I think we woke him up here. So arguably, you know, maybe there, right? Um, and it says three spaces away, but bear in mind it's three of our spaces away, so one, two, three. So I'm going to say that that's where the dragon is. So let's put a cube there. Now, after we stepped on the dragon, the dragon killed us, and then the dragon flew. So he's back on the treasure. Because remember, as soon as he kills us, we're back on our um, secret room. So let's go... Right. It makes it sound like he's flying, but he didn't go anywhere. He's staying exactly where he is. So let's see if I can map this. <clears throat> okay. I can take off the cube. Um, this is going to be challenging. So I think that's where I want to go. And so I want him to fly towards me a bit so I can get him off the trail, right? So I'm going to hit next turn again. I'm going to hit next turn again. Now let's run. One, two, three, four, five. And let's go here. There we go. We got it. We got the treasure, folks. All right. So one of the things you can do is you can actually take your player off and then use the treasure to show that you have the treasure. And the dragon is there. So here's the problem. <laughs> we found a way there, but now I don't know how to get out because he's standing in my exit. <laughs> oh, I'm so stupid. Um... All right, I made it here for one, and oh no! I lost. <laughs> ah. Okay, so obviously I could have chosen to go this way, but I was worried about the same outcome. Uh, <laughs> um, that's a bummer, a real bummer. If this wall wasn't here, I was gonna be able to blow past him. Now, when you're carrying the treasure, you only get four movement points, but that was enough, because if I would've gotten to here, he actually would've flown like this, and then I would've gone one, two, three, four. He would've flown here, and then I would've gone one, two, uh, buckaroo, right there. I actually would've won the game. Um, <clears throat> if that wall was not there. Ugh, so. Yes, it's tons of luck, but uh, uh, how many years is it now? 91, 2001, that's 30, oh my gosh, 38 years later, 
I'm still enjoying this game. So uh, thanks for watching and joining me at the table for this very short game, and I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as always, stay awesome.